Hi, I'm Michael Joy. Welcome back to another episode of The Ignorant Eye, I Overreact. This episode is about uh, mold making. The title is called Making a Product from Scratch, Silicone Mold, CNC Machining and Resin Casting. If you've got a CNC, it sounds like this is going to look like something professional. Right now it's just black screen, so let's get right into it. He's got t uh, about 12 cuts in less than a minute. So this is my comment on this guy. So first thing is production quality is excellent. So he's a, he's a craftsperson to begin with. Whenever I see somebody in their shop, I do this little micro shop critique. He looks like he is in a newer environment for him. It's clean, but it's not quite built out. There's not the comforts of the shop in there. But he strikes me as kind of a, um, a chef you know, working at the table. The thing that you can't tell when watching a video like this is how noisy those CNC machines are and how dusty they can be when you're cutting some large parts. But he's very fluid in his environment. Plus he's setting up the cameras and taking them down. I mean, what's really fast is now four times as long for him. So uh, high five. I think he's like a very contemplative craftsperson. Let's see where this is going. Mm. Looks like our shop. I don't know where his ventilation is, though. I just love it when people give a damn, you know, about what they're making and and uh, they take the time to not only, look, he could just turn this part out, but he's making a story out of this, something that is taking an extremely boring process and bringing a poetry to it, a rhythm, a cadence, um, very nice. Looks like he's using a, either a piece of MDF. Yeah, it doesn't look like tooling board. Looks like he's building a phone case. I don't know, something for a car? What's he making, Kay? Okay. Watching it is very zen, but if you're in that room, man, it's loud. Yeah, see, his shop isn't even finished, so it looks like he's just moved into something here. And uh, it's probably as his videos go on, he has built out. But I like this guy. He's tight. He, he cares about stuff. He's uh, clean cut. He's not sloppy. His tattoos are not shotgun. Um, I'm judging the mold maker here, but um, man, he's killing it. Just needs some safety stuff. Glasses and... Definitely goggles and uh, a mask and headset. Do 
You can tell when someone's made something a bunch of times. There's no hesitation. There it looks like tooling board, not MDF. It's a uh, tooling board most likely, I'm changing my opinion. Oh, no spray booth. Okay, I do have one comment. When somebody is so good at something and it's so well produced and yet they do a few things that look good on camera but in my mind, they're careless practices. They can stick into someone else's mind of saying, well, that guy was really good and he did it. And what happens is you spray with a spray can. And it's just like, oh, I'm just gonna do this really quick. Over the course of a week or a month or a year, he's done this a lot of times, a lot of spraying. And that has an accumulative effect. The same thing with the, the, the if he's using tooling board, the same thing with the urethane dust that's going on. We have filters and things set up. So it looks good in the video, but it doesn't look good in your lungs. So that's my only, and it's not about him. It just could be any, anybody. But I get the cinematography of this, you don't want to see a guy in a mask, and I get it, I get it. So it looks like he's putting a nice surface on it so the mold picks up um, a little bit of a shine. If he were really fussy, he could make it two pieces, cast one in acrylic and then fire polish it and then make a master, a master mold off of that. But this looks good enough. Ooh, fussy. I always wonder who teaches somebody like this. I mean, I was self-taught, but um, you know, I wonder if his uncle had a shop or his dad or something gave him a, um, a push to be interested in it. Interesting. Even as a pro, he's not using reusable boards. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, it's just you gotta... There's a lot of off-camera work that he's done to do this. I'm not big on the glue gun technique. It's clean, but not reliable. Oh, tiny little chamber, nice. What? He's got the gloves, where are the goggles? Splash that in your eye, it hurts like hell. I had resin in my eye one time. Uh, I learned forever. Hmm. I've, n uh, yeah, I've never done it that way. Uh, I don't like working on the floor. All those drips get on the floor, then you step in them and then you walk around. Yikes, lead it, okay. That's a very small vacuum chamber. He's got a good pouring technique. He doesn't need to go that slow since he degassed it already. He could just lump it in, but it's pretty. Very clean. ASMR satisfaction. 
See, I would have put that in a very clean spot to recycle it later. Organized drawers. This guy's a showman. So it's the next day or a few hours later. Softening the heat glue. I'm gonna need a foot massage after this. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's very relaxing. It's fun to see people not fuck up. The internet's full of people fucking up. This is, this is the, the non-fucking part of the internet. Ooh, you gotta have a steady hand. Good man. He probably gave himself his tattoos, for God's sakes, you know? He's getting ready to make the second part of the mold. Ah, oh, spray booth. Some of those propellants are nasty. Now it's on his clothes. It's on the cabinets. I go from 10 down, just for that. His knowledge is high though, definitely. Definitely, uh, I, I would love guys like this in my shop. Yeah. He's into the beauty of the process, man. I would see this every day and it would just, I'd rush right through it. It's nice to see it slowed down. It, I'm in a shop, but I feel like I'm in nature somehow. I feel like he needs to take a deep breath. This is definitely a type A guy. <laughs> Precision. This is the moment of truth. I mean, if he hadn't done it right, that mold is definitely laminated together. This is a piece that's gonna require pressure casting. So let's see if he's gonna pour. Oh yeah, he's gonna pour vertically. Good man. He could have tooled this part into the mold given his precision skills. In our shop, we would build both halves separately, and it would just be one pour each half, and then it would match. But not needed. Heat, okay. So you've heard me say all these beautiful things about this guy's work here. Absolutely above, above stars. But he has a two-piece silicone mold. Depending on the durometer of that silicone mold, meaning the hardness of it, when he's just put it together like that and he taped it, he can actually compress the mold together. And it's going to make the negative space inside thinner or possibly irregular. And remember, he has this precision thin board in there, which is now the negative space. So he could have just closed it off accidentally. My guess is he didn't. He's done this a lot, but I saw that come down. The other thing is, is I would have put a little bit of uh, lubrication on the seam line, the outside edges of the mold, so it seats nicely and smooth and goes together. These compression castings are tough to get correct. If he has a high tolerance client, he's really uh, pushing the luck there. Um, he should have had uh, there's the boards that he put below and on the top, and he should have had some sideboards there that control the thickness of it. So uh, a little fussy, but he's doing precision parts. If he's just making a prototype, forget everything I just said. But if he's making something that's got to be to spec, it's, he's got to be a little tighter.
Oh, he's doing a colored casting. Nice. With that ratio, it looked like a, an epoxy, uh, excuse me, um, polyester, which is nasty. He's got no glasses again either. Dude, craftspeople need great vision. What are you doing? He's not doing a pressure cast either. How about that? What a surprise. That's just a gravity cast, which just uses atmospheric pressure to That's a high-risk pour. You have to have a real high viscosity resin to get in there. We'll see if he has to do any patchwork. You know, for prototypes, you can also paint the inside of the mold. And, um, and then the resin will stick to the paint, and then you, have a, you exit with a painted surface. But internal pigmentation is the best, but prototyping, um, I think this is for a car. Kay likes cars. He looks like a car guy, too. Yeah. In some shops, the tooling marks would not be acceptable. Oh, maybe it's packaging. No, it would be way too expensive for packaging. You'd thermoform this if it were packaging. This looks like it needs to be durable for some reason. Oh, we don't get to see. Darn it. All right, so it looks like I have the similar bitches about things and the similar appreciations. Let me just repeat. This guy has done this before. He's well thought out. Looks like he's building a nice shop that he's gonna grow into. There was nothing on the walls, so not even any art, so I know it's a new place. Again, it's just a purely safety concern, but for the cinematography of the video, I understand that, but I would have put a commentary about that. Uh, ventilation, glasses, gloves, goggles, uh, mixing, not mixing on the floor, not stepping in things and let people know when you're doing something for the camera and not for teaching. But maybe he just doesn't care. It's just the beauty of the video, which I totally grooved with and uh, puts a lot of pressure on us, Kay, to make some nice looking stuff. Uh, but our motivation is slightly different. I give him high marks. Can't tell what happened off the camera, if there was any corrections or how many attempts something took to get that casting. I would have definitely pressure cast it, but nice job. Thank you for watching this video. We're getting ready to launch a new platform called Handufacturing. It's gonna feature a lot more educational films about mold making and casting from very basic to advanced mold making. Our hope is that it helps the business entrepreneurs out there learn efficient ways to manufacture their products and bring a lot more wealth into their household. Stay tuned.